Hi, I'm John, and I'm going to show you how to make a platformer game with a special effect on death, where we respawn like a ghost. All right, so uh, stick around and we'll build this game here in just about an hour. Yeah, I'm gonna get started here with a new blank project with the starter content enabled. And so you get this handful of uh, starter items here. Uh, and I'll just actually start a whole new level here. I'll just go file, new level, empty level. All right, um, and I'll start setting this up here. I'm gonna add a directional light I'm also going to add a BP Sky Sphere from the engine content. And so you'll need to have settings, show engine content selected. And I'll just search here for BP underscore Sky. All right, I'll drag that into the scene. And I'm going to set the directional light actor to my directional light I just made. And uh, now I can uh, move my light and I could refresh this sky material. So I'm going to grab the directional light and I'll set the rotation manually here. I'm going to just set it to 90 degrees on the Y. Uh, which is basically nighttime, and I'll select the sky sphere, refresh the material. All right, and that's pretty much what I'm after. Uh, okay, so the next thing I'm going to do here is add an uh, exponential height fog. All right, and uh, that's good for now. I'm going to get started uh, building my platformer level. So I'm going to use some assets from the engine for that as well. I'm going to find sm underscore cube. And these cubes here are uh, from the VR template, actually. Um, but they're handy to use for various things. I like to use them for building out uh, levels. I'm going to just duplicate one of these, Control V. Uh, and I'll drag that duplicate over to my main content folder. And I'm also going to find the material, which is stem floor 01. It's an instance uh, of this material that they're using for those cubes. So I'll duplicate that as well here, drag that to my content folder. All right, then I'll just turn off the engine content for a minute here and go back to my content folder and rename these. We'll call this uh, cube style one. And uh, this will be the cube uh, master underscore MAT. And I'll right click and make an instance of that called cube style one underscore MAT. Uh, and I'll open that up here and we'll set um, let's say this glow color will set to uh, maybe a bright green here. And uh, I'll set the floor color as well, maybe a little bit darker. And uh, maybe add a little bit of blue, like that. All right. And uh, so I'll just select this cube style one and set the material to the cube style one material I just made. All right. And uh, I'll also duplicate that, so I have another style of cube here. Uh, cube style two, sure. Duplicate the material. Uh, just call that cube style two, M-A-T. And I'll just change the uh, glow color on this one to like a pink or something. And I'll apply that to cube style two. All right. Uh, and so I've got my cubes here. I'm just gonna actually make a folder and stash those in there. And uh, I'll start with my level here. So these cubes, uh, they're actually a bit smaller than the regular cubes here. Um, you can see the approximate size, uh, 50 by 50 by 50, basically a half meter. Uh, the typical normal uh, cube in the engine is a one meter cube. So keep in mind these are uh, uh, half the size in each axis, so a quarter of the size essentially. So what I'm going to do here is scale this up. Uh, so it's uh, half meters. I'm going to make it maybe 25 meters across by scaling it to 50 by 50. And uh, let's say by 0 0.5 for uh, thickness. Uh, all right, and of course can't see very much here because uh, we made it nighttime with our directional light. And uh, I want to do that so we have this night sky, but I also want some light in the uh, playing area. So uh, I'll have to keep this directional light, since it's hooked up to the sky sphere, I'll have to keep this one at nighttime. I'll just add uh, a couple extra lights here. Uh, directional light. Two, and let's set this one. I'll just use Control L. 
and uh, set maybe something like that. The intensity is quite high here. Maybe uh, one would be fine. All right, and I'll get rid of that um, kind of harsh reflection here just by softening up the, uh, we'll say, source uh, soft angle 20. Um, all right, maybe even more here. Let's go with uh, like 50. Okay, uh, and I'm going to, let's see here. I want to add a post process. Uh, and I'll set the extent to infinite. And then I'll set the brightness. And I want to just control this by uh, setting these to the same number here, 1 and 1. All right. There we go. That's better. Uh, all right. And I'm going to make a playing area here with these. So I'm going to grab this one. Uh, maybe I'll put it down to Z location of zero. Actually, I'll set the whole thing to zero, zero, zero. Uh, just to get started here, and I'm going to just duplicate this by holding Alt and uh, make something like that. And uh, I'll grab both of these and duplicate them again here with Alt. And uh, one more time. All right, uh, now I'm going to grab uh, just one of these and uh, duplicate this up here and put it at uh, maybe around 1000Z. Uh, and I'll just drag it on to sort of the edge of the playing area here. And uh, we'll duplicate that one as well to over here. And so my idea is that the player is going to start here on uh, one platform, and they're going to have to make their way to the other platform, and we're going to have some uh, stuff in between here for them to uh, have to cross over. Uh, I'm going to grab my directional light here, my second directional light, and just turn off cast shadows. Okay. Uh, and what I'll do as well here is just add the third person character to the project. And I'll drag one onto this uh, platform right here. Turn it around. All right, and uh, let's see. I want to actually back this camera up a little more from the player. Um, I'm just going to open up this blueprint. Um, I'll select the camera boom here and find the target arm length. It's 400. I'll set it to maybe 700. OK. And uh, so we need to set up to uh, possess this character as well here in the details. Uh, I'll just select the third person character and find uh, possess in the details. Auto possess player zero. And uh, that's the basic setup here. Uh, all right, now I want to get started on making some uh, platforms that we can use to jump across. So uh, I'll make a new actor here in the root folder. And I'll call this one uh, spring, spring underscore platform. OK. Uh, so first, I'm going to add a static mesh. I'll call it platform. And I'm going to set that to uh, cube style 2. All right. And uh, the next thing I'm going to do here is add a sphere. And I'm just going to lower that down here, something like uh, maybe minus 50. And set the scale here to like 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and 0.1. All right. Uh, and I'm also going to set the visibility for that to false. And uh, for collision, I'm going to change it to uh, just overlap all. Overlap all should be fine. Uh, and then what I want to do is create a. Uh, a physics constraint. We're going to turn on physics to make the springy behavior for this platform. So uh, I'll do that first here. Simulate, simulate physics. And uh, now I'll make that, uh, we'll actually drag this sphere here back to the default scene root. I don't want it a uh, child of the platform. And uh, click on the scene root again here and add a constraint. 
All right. Uh, and I'll move the physics constraint uh, up a little, maybe something like this. And uh, we'll set in the details here the component names. We want to attach this to uh, platform. And component name 2 will be sphere. Uh, OK, and then to make the springy kind of behavior here, what I'll do is uh, allow some uh, linear motion. We'll uh, allow limited motion in all three axes. And I'll uh, limit that to maybe about 40. And uh, swing motion, we want to be able to uh, basically tilt side to side and forward and backward. Uh, maybe not uh, twisting side to side on the yaw. And uh, so I'm not sure here if that actually correlates to the which swing and which twist. I'll just look at these graphics and check it out here. We'll lock them all to start with. Uh, OK. So yes, that's one of the dimensions that we want. Uh, maybe limited, though. Uh, about 15 degrees or so and uh, let's see here <clears throat> yeah that's the other dimension there okay and so uh, we'll limit that one as well by 15 so uh, it's this motion here uh, basically twisting that we're not allowing and uh, we're allowing it to tilt 15 degrees in either of these uh, other two directions Okay, and then what I'm going to do as well is uh, we'll turn on the linear motor and the angular motors here. So I'll set the uh, position target to 0, 0, 0. Uh, the strength, for now I'll just say maybe 100. And the angular motor, uh, I need to set twist and swing. And uh, we'll check on twist and swing and set the strength there to maybe 100 as well. All right. Uh, and what I want to do is, for the size of this platform, I want to be able to adjust this uh, in the editor. So I'm going to make a new variable here called platform scale. And I'll set the variable type to a vector. Uh, and then I'll set this to instance editable as well. And now uh, in the construction script, I'll just grab the platform reference here. And we'll set the scale, uh, relative scale 3D. And I'll just plug in the platform scale variable. All right, and uh, so now what I'm going to do here is I'll go back to my level here and I'll just drag one of those actors in here. Uh, we'll just put it out here, let's say. And uh, I'll set the platform scale by finding it in the details here. Might need to compile here. Uh, there we go, platform scale. Uh, okay, and I want to set this to, uh, it's like half meters, so let's make it maybe uh, five by five. So it'll be like two and a half meters by two and a half meters, and maybe uh, by uh, one half meter in thickness. All right, that seems pretty good for now. Move it a bit closer to the edge here, and uh, we'll try it out here. Uh, okay, so it's pretty stiff here still. It's not, not really uh, acting very springy yet, so we're going to make some changes here. Uh, let's see, the first thing that I'll do is adjust the mass of the platform. Go back to the uh, viewport here. Um, oh, here, what I'll do is set the default platform scale to 1, 1, 1, so we can at least see something if uh, nothing's been entered in there. Uh, okay, and so platform uh, mass uh, I'll override the mass and we'll call this, uh, let's say, 50 kgs. Uh, and I'll also make a new variable here called uh, spring, let's call it springiness. And I'll set that to a float. And uh, we'll adjust those, I'll go back to the construction script here, grab the physics constraint, and we'll adjust the strength of the uh, drives by uh, setting the parameters here. Set drive uh, parameters. Okay, so set linear drive parameters. We'll start with that one. And I'm just going to plug uh, springiness here into position strength. Uh, and I'll get the uh, angular drive parameters as well here. Angular drive uh, parameters. All right, and we'll do the same thing here. I'll plug in springiness into position strength. All right, and I'll set that to uh, a default value here of maybe uh, maybe a bit less, maybe like 50. 
uh, OK. And uh, I'll also select that variable and set instance editable to true so I can find that uh, in my details panel here. Uh, all right, let's try a springiness of 50, and we've changed the mass to 50. Uh, OK, now it's maybe a little bit too loose. We'll uh, increase that springiness up here. Uh, let's put it back. Let's put it to 125. Whoops. All right. Uh, getting there. Let's uh, just make a couple more tweaks still. Let's go back to the uh, platform actor here. And uh, let's look at the physics constraint. Um, let me see here. I'll go back to the viewport. Uh, maybe we'll change the position of the constraint here. Let's put it more like the center of the box here. And uh, maybe I'll increase the uh, springiness strength here a little bit higher. Let's say 150. And uh, let's give it a whirl here. All right. So that's uh, feeling a little bit better, feeling a bit more like I was thinking. All right, uh, let's take that and uh, make a copy. We'll all hit Alt and uh, duplicate it over here. And uh, let's change the uh, scale for this one, platform scale. Uh, let's make it uh, maybe smaller, 3 by 3 and maybe by 2, more like a block here. And uh, we'll change the springiness as well to something like uh, 75. All right, and I'm going to grab both of these here and uh, use Alt and duplicate them both. And uh, let's duplicate those again. And then maybe just duplicate this one. And let's see if we can uh, get across here. OK. okay so. Uh, certainly possible, but uh, obviously I'm having some trouble. Uh, okay, I'm pretty happy with that for now. I'm going to move on to uh, setting up something else here. I want to make some functionality for when the player falls off the platforms to uh, ragdoll and uh, fall away from the camera. Uh, so I'm going to open up the third person blueprint here. Uh, and I'll find the new spot on the event graph here, just next to the existing uh, logic. Uh, and I'll make a new custom event. I'll call this one Go Ragdoll. And uh, what I'll do first here is make a variable called is ragdoll question mark. And we'll set that to true. And then I'll grab the mesh component here. And uh, we'll say set collision enabled. And I'm going to change the collision type here to physics only. And I want to do the same thing for the capsule component as well here. So I'll drag that and plug it into the same node. And then I'll grab the mesh component uh, again, the reference, and say set simulate physics and set that to true. Then I'm going to grab the camera boom uh, component here, uh, or rather the follow camera component, I should say. And uh, we'll say detach from component. And uh, I'll say keep world on all of those. All right. And what I want to do is after the camera detaches, I want it to keep uh, looking at the mesh as it ragdolls uh, down toward the, uh, the ground or platform or whatever. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is make a, we're going to say set timer by event. And uh, I'll just make it a very short time so it's going to happen basically every tick. I'm just making a, sort of a makeshift event tick here that'll only happen when this uh, custom event happens. So we'll say looping here and uh, make a custom event. I'll call it, uh, let's say, look at tick. Uh, and what I want to do is I'll right click and say find look at rotation. And I want to find the look at rotation of the mesh. I'll grab the mesh reference here. Uh, and we'll say uh, get world location. Plug that into target. 
And the uh, start is going to be our camera. We'll get the follow camera reference here and get world location. I'll plug that in. So we've got the look at rotation. We'll set the follow camera world rotation and plug in this return value. All right. Um, so one more thing that I want to do here is uh, I've created an audio cue and basically all I did is I just recorded my own voice. I went to Audacity and uh, recorded basically a sound of like, ah, like you're falling off of something. And you can probably do something a lot better than that if you want. Or you can download this clip from the comments uh, from my Google Drive. And so uh, I've pushed the clip through a couple of uh, filters, um, some distortion and some echo and stuff like that. And uh, it sounds OK for now. It gives the general demonstration of the effect. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'll uh, import that just from my desktop here. Let's put it in the uh, content folder, let's say. All right, and uh, what I'll do is in the third person character, I'm going to add a audio component. I'll just call it player fell audio. And uh, drag it onto the mesh here so it's attached to the mesh. And we'll set the sound here to player fell. And uh, all right, what I want to do is set auto activate to false. And I want to play it when something somewhere in here, let's say uh, just before we set the timer. I'll just grab the reference here, player fell audio, and play. All right. And uh, let's see, one more thing I'm going to do here is uh, on player fell audio, I'll find the attenuation settings, uh, override attenuation, and uh, we'll say the fall off distance could be something like uh, maybe 2,000. All right. So uh, that's pretty much it for that function. I'm going to just grab this all, comment it, and say, go ragdoll. And uh, the next thing that I want to do here then is make an event tick node. And uh, I need to do a handful of things from this. So I'm going to make a sequence as well. All right. And uh, OK, the first thing I want to do is uh, a ragdoll check. So we want to see if we need to go into the ragdoll state. And what I want to do is get uh, is falling. And uh, we want to get is falling, but uh, we want to make sure we haven't just started jumping. So that'll be true if we have just started jumping. Uh, we want to wait until we're uh, actually at the top of our jump and falling. So what I need to do is uh, a couple things here. I'm going to scroll out and find uh, input action jump on the original blueprint here. Uh, I'll just delete this input touch here. Don't need that. And uh, I'll move the jump node over here. And I want to do a couple of things here. I'm going to grab the character movement component and grab uh, set notify apex and we'll set that to true and that'll uh, turn on notification that we need when the character reaches the apex of the jump uh, and then the next thing I want to do is make a variable we can track here uh, uh, let's say is starting jump question mark all right and uh, we'll set that to true when we've just started the jump all right, and then what I want to do is respond to this event here. Um, so uh, let's see, I can go to the character here, and uh, we'll find that here on reached jump apex, make the event. Uh, okay, and I have to bind the event here. So uh, what I want to do is uh, I'll do a begin play node here. So this happens at the begin play stage. And uh, we'll bind that to this event. And all we want to do here really is uh, set this variable is starting jump. Uh, back to false. All right. Um, and so I'll just move this begin play over here a little bit. And uh, now what I can do here is grab uh, is starting jump. We'll get that and uh, say not, uh, Boolean not. So uh, we can see if the character is falling, then I'll get an and node. And we'll say and is not starting the jump. And we'll get a branch node. All right, uh, and so now we want to say basically start a timer. Uh, so the character has started falling. We'll set a timer by event, and uh, you can set this amount of time based on uh, you know what you, how the functionality that you want. You can fine tune it. 
I'm going to do something like uh, 0.8 seconds. So 0.8 seconds after the fall starts, uh, whether it's the apex of the jump or just uh, falling straight off a ledge, uh, 0.8 seconds later, we will check again here. We'll say uh, ragdoll check. And uh, we'll check again if the player is still falling. Let's grab these nodes here, duplicate, uh, make a branch. And uh, if the player is still falling, then we want to enter ragdoll. Uh, sorry, go ragdoll. And if it's false, we want to reset this check here. We want to first make this uh, do once, so it can only happen one time. Uh, because it's on the event tick here, so this is going to keep coming back over and over again. Uh, we want to just do this once, and then we want to make a custom event here that we can call to reset this branch of nodes. We'll call it reset ragdoll check, and plug it to the reset node here, and that's what we want to do off the false here. We want to reset ragdoll check. All right. The other thing I want to do here is promote this timer return value to a variable. We'll call it the ragdoll check timer. Um, and so that we can check if we have started this timer up, we know we're about to check for the uh, ragdoll state. Um, and that pretty much covers this step. I'm going to comment this and call it uh, ragdoll check. And the next step is to check uh, if we've landed and reset this uh, timer. So what I'll do here is say, We'll get the is falling nodes again, but I'm going to get a not boolean uh, not this time. And so we'll say if the player is not falling and uh, the ragdoll check timer is valid. So the timer is running, but the player is not falling. So we'll use an and node here. Uh, in this case, we want to do uh, a reset of sorts. So we'll say. Uh, we'll grab the ragdoll check timer reference here and clear and invalidate timer. And then I want to uh, reset ragdoll check again. So I'll duplicate that one. All right. Uh, and so I'll comment these here. And this is basically going to be the landing check. And uh, the next thing that I want to do is um, when we enter ragdoll physics mode, the mesh disconnects from the capsule. And uh, so we want to keep the capsule uh, in the position of the mesh. So I'm going to grab the capsule component here. Uh, and we only want to do this if we are ragdoll. So I'll actually grab is ragdoll here first and say branch. And uh, we'll plug that in here. And if we are a ragdoll, then we'll grab the capsule component and say set world uh, location. And uh, we'll get the world location of the mesh here. I'll grab the mesh reference and I'll say uh, get socket location. And uh, I'll get the location of the pelvis. So it's pretty much in the center of the mesh. I'm going to plug that in here to uh, world location. So I'll just comment this and say, keep capsule in position during ragdoll. Uh, so let's go ahead and check out uh, the functionality that we have so far here. I'll uh, just compile and run this here. And uh, we'll jump over a couple of these. Uh, oh, I fell. OK. Uh, so I want to fall a bit further there before, because uh, we're hitting the ground kind of before the sound even ends. So I'm going to grab all my floor here and just move it down maybe 1,000 or something. Uh, a little over a thousand, say thirteen hundred, um, and let's try that again here. Yeah, that's pretty much the idea that I was going for. Okay, I want to make the player respawn after falling, but I want to make it look like they're getting up from their corpse. I'm going to go back into the third-person blueprint, and on the event tick here, I'm going to add something else here. We'll get is ragdoll again. Uh, make a branch from that. And I'll just plug in from this sequence down here. Uh, and if the player is ragdoll, I want to get the mesh component here. And from that, I can say get component velocity. And it's going to get me the velocity, basically, of the mesh or physics components of the mesh. I can get the length of this vector and see if it's less than, let's say, 1 to basically figure out if we've come to a stop. So uh, and once we've come to a stop, we'll do branch here. 
and I want to figure out uh, which of my two animations that I want to play. I have two animations, one for the character getting up from its back and one from it getting up from the front or from its stomach. Uh, so I'll import those to start with here. Let's go to my content folder, grab those from the desktop, and I'll set the skeleton here to the UE4 skeleton, import all. All right. And uh, what I need to do with these actually is make uh, montages. I'm going to right click this, create an anim montage. And I'll right click the other one here, create anim montage. Uh, and I need to open both of these and make a small change here. I need to open up the blend in settings here and set the blend time to zero. Close that one. Uh, and I'll make the same change on this file here. Blend time is zero. All right, uh, next what we'll do is uh, I want to figure out which montage to play by doing a line trace. I'm going to say line uh, trace by channel. And the starting point for my line trace is going to be the mesh. I'm going to get a socket location. And I'll plug, plug in pelvis here. We'll get the uh, uh, socket location of the pelvis, use that as our start point. Uh, and then the end point, what I want to do is take our start point and add some amount to it. Um, so I'll take this and use a plus node, uh, plug the result here into the end. And what I want to add to it is um, I want to move uh, forward a little bit from the pelvis uh, for the end point. So we'll get the mesh again here and say get socket uh, rotation this time. And I'll uh, plug in pelvis here again. And uh, now I can say get uh, right vector. Uh, which seems to work better than forward vector for some reason, uh, the orientation, I guess, of the uh, socket or the bone or whatever. Uh, so from that, I can uh, add some magnitude. So I'll uh, multiply this, and I'll just plug that in here. Uh, Right-click the pin here and convert to a float. And I'll set this to 100. So we'll be going 100 uh, centimeters or 1 meter out from the uh, pelvis uh, for our line trace. And what we're going to do is basically just figure out if our line trace hit anything at all. Because if it hits something, then um, we're likely on our front or on our stomach. And if we don't, then we're probably on our back. So we'll just get a branch here. And uh, now I want to set which montage to play. And I'm going to record that in a variable. I'll make a new variable here called uh, montage to play. And I'll set the variable type here to an anim montage. And then I'll make uh, two set nodes here, one for true and one for false. Uh, and if it's true that we hit something, we'll play the uh, forward get up montage. And if we didn't hit anything, the backward get up montage. Um, I could probably have a better name, but that's OK. Uh, and then the next thing that we want to do here is we want to disable the input for the player. So while the montage is playing, we don't want them to be able to move around. I'm going to get player controller here. And uh, what I'll do is just right click here and say disable input. And I can plug in this player controller reference right here. All right, so I'll plug these in here. And then I want to go ahead and spawn actor from class. Uh, and actually, before I keep going here, I want to back up. And we want to add a node here. Uh, before the line trace, uh, I want to put in a do once node. So it's, uh, we're coming on the event tick here. And we want to get, uh, you know, if it's ragdoll and we've come to a stop, it's going to keep firing true every tick. Uh, we only want to do this stuff one time. And then uh, again here, I'll make a custom event that we can use to reset this branch of nodes. Uh, we'll call it reset uh, spawn new player. Uh, or I could have said respawn player. That's fine, though. So all right, moving over here again. Uh, spawn actor, we're going to spawn a new third person character. And I'll split this uh, pin here, the transform pin. Uh, and for the location, we'll use the location of our actor, our capsule. We've uh, kept our capsule in position with the mesh, so I can say uh, get actor location. And uh, we'll plug that in for the location. And then for the rotation, I want to get uh, the yaw position of our camera. So I'll get the follow camera here. And uh, I'm going to say get world rotation. And I'll split this rotation pin so I can get just the yaw value. Uh, and split this rotation pin and plug in just the yaw value. And we'll leave the pitch and the roll at 0. And I also want to pass this montage to play 
uh, to the new third person character. So what I'll do here is just select this montage to play variable. We'll say instance editable and expose on spawn. And now I can uh, right click this and refresh the node. Uh, first I'll compile actually. Uh, right click, uh, refresh node. And now I've got montage to play exposed here. I can drag in this value and uh, we'll load it up when we spawn the character. All right. Uh, so after we've spawned the character, what we want to do is um, move our camera to where the new character is going to be spawning. So I'm going to say um, get player controller. We'll get the player controller reference here. Uh, drag from this and set view target with blend. And uh, the new view target, I can drag in uh, the return value here from the new actor. And the blend time, let's say, two seconds. Uh, all right, and then we'll do uh, another delay here. We'll wait those two seconds. And uh, actually, what we'll do is we'll wait a bit longer here. I'm going to wait, say, four seconds total. And then I'm going to possess this uh, new player here, so the new pawn. So I'll grab from the player controller, say possess, and uh, drag in this return value from the new actor. All right. Uh, and then ultimately, the actor that is uh, gone ragdoll here and has uh, basically fallen, we're going to want to destroy that. So we'll wait some number of seconds, uh, maybe 10 seconds here, and then say destroy actor. OK, and so next thing I want to do here is when the uh, new third person character spawns, I want to play this montage. And uh, so I'm going to go to my begin play event here. Uh, and I'll just move this down over here, make some more room. And after we bind this event, uh, what I'll do is grab the montage to play. Uh, and first we'll do a delay, though. I want to give time for the camera to arrive at the uh, new location before we start playing the montage. So we'll do a delay here of two seconds. And uh, we don't want the character to be visible during that time. So um, what I need to do is we'll set the mesh here to we'll set the visibility to false. So when the character first spawns, it won't be visible. And after this delay period, uh, we'll set it to visible. Let's grab the mesh here, set visibility. And we'll set that true. Uh, and then we will play the montage. We'll check uh, is valid, see if there's a montage to play. And uh, if there is, then we'll play it. I'll just grab the mesh reference here, say play montage. And uh, we'll pipe in the montage to play variable value. And the play rate here, I'm going to slow it down a bit. Let's uh, make it more dramatic here, maybe make it like 0.4 of the normal play rate. Okay. Okay, one more thing before we uh, try it out here is um, we don't want the player to be able to have control here while they're still invisible. Um, and so what I'll do here is just uh, before this delay period here, we'll set uh, disable input. And I'm going to plug in a player controller reference for that. Uh, oops. All right. <clears throat> and then uh, after the montage is uh, completed, we'll re-enable the input. So I'll just go here and say enable input and plug that to on completed. And I'll just duplicate this player controller node over there. All right. And I'm going to grab all this here, comment this, begin play. And uh, let's try it out, see where we're at with this. OK, so I have uh, no control at the beginning here. And uh, we don't have any control, of course, because there's no montage playing. So this enable input never runs. Uh, so I need to actually plug in from the is not valid. If there's no montage to play, then just skip right through to uh, enabling input. All right, let's give it a whirl here. OK, let's get control. And uh, let's see, we'll fall off here. All right. OK, and we're blending to our new camera position. And uh, perfect, yeah, we get up from uh, the ground here, and uh, we're ready to keep on going. Uh, might have to uh, cut off control for just a little bit longer there. Um, all right, so I'm pretty happy with that so far. Uh, we'll just try this one more time here.
All right, I landed on my back this time. And uh, oh, it's taking a minute to come to a stop there. I was just artifacting around a little bit. Uh, but okay, yeah, that's the basic idea. And uh, so I'm done with that part. Now what I want to do is uh, introduce some Niagara effects to make it look like uh, we're a ghost that's getting up from our corpse there. All right, so I'll right click here in my content browser and make a new Niagara system, uh, just an empty system. I'll call this ghost underscore FX. All right, and what I'll do here first is add uh, a new emitter, just a, a simple sprite burst emitter. Okay, and this one here, uh, first I'll take off uh, instantaneous burst and uh, we'll set this to a rate. Um, so I'll delete that, add a spawn rate, and I'll set this to uh, maybe 500. Okay, and uh, what I want to do as well here is add a initialize mesh reproduction sprite. And I'll set the preview mesh to SK mannequin. Uh, and for initialize particle here, I'm going to set these particles to like a bright green color. And uh, lifetime, uh, two seconds is fine. The emitter state here, I'll set this to uh, loop behavior once is fine, loop duration, maybe half a second. Uh, and we'll just add a curl noise to these. All right, and uh, let's see here. We'll set the curl noise strength to maybe like 200. And uh, we need to get CPU access, so we'll say fix now. All right, so that's the beginning of our effect. Uh, it just spawns these, and they uh, sort of fly off. And, uh, okay, what I want to do is make those a bit smaller here. So I'm going to say on the initialized mesh here, I'll say particle scale, maybe 0.3. Uh, yeah, that's better. All right. Uh, maybe we'll spawn a bit more of these. Spawn rate, maybe 800. All right, perfect. And so what I want to do now is I'm going to duplicate this emitter. And uh, for this one, I'm going to set the uh, particle scale back to 1. And the uninitialized particle, I'll set this to like a gray color, maybe uh, something like this. Uh, not too dark, some uh, sort of medium gray color here. And uh, what I want to do with those is set uh, on the particle update, we're going to use a skeletal mesh location to keep them uh, at the skeletal mesh. So uh, we'll just set this to the SK mannequin. Whoops. And uh, sampling type here, I want to get the surface triangles. All right, and uh, I want to change the uh, sprite renderer here. I'm going to use the smoke sub UV material. And the sub image size for that one is 8x8. Eight eight. It's an 8x8 eight eight grid. Okay, so that's looking a bit better. The spawn rate needs to be quite a bit higher, maybe like 10,000. And uh, the loop should be a bit longer here. Loop duration, maybe like 3 seconds. All right, that's kind of the effect that I'm after here. So the green particles spawn and fly off, and then the, uh, the smoke particles sort of fill in the rest of the, uh, the skeletal mesh. Okay, so uh, I'll save that for now. And what I'll do is I want to add this to the uh, third person character. So I'm going to just add that as a Niagara uh, particle system component. Uh, Ghost FX is already selected for me, that's great. And uh, I'll turn off auto activate so it doesn't turn on right away. We'll control that ourselves. Uh, and one more thing here is I need to select on the uh, third person character, uh, or the mesh I should say here. Uh, I need to find, I'll just search here for tick in the details. Uh, it's this visibility based anim tick option. And I need to set this here to always tick pose and refresh bones. Uh, and that'll make sure our Niagara uh, mesh is updated. Okay. Uh, and so now we want to control uh, when we're displaying that. So I'm just going to find, uh, let's say, uh, right after our two second delay at the beginning here. We'll make some room here. Expand this. And uh, I'll grab the Ghost FX reference and set active. All right. And uh, then what we'll do is I'll uh, just move this entire thing over a little bit, make some more room. Uh, okay, when the montage is complete, uh, we'll grab Ghost FX here and set active 
and uh, set it to false. And uh, this is where we'll set the vis uh, visibility of the mesh. So I'm actually just going to grab this and we'll control X to cut it, uh, control V over here to paste it. And we'll just drag all these nodes a bit closer here. Shrink that up. Uh, new visibility will be, uh, oops, uh, true, yes. Uh, so we'll turn off the ghost effects and turn on the visibility of the mesh when the montage is completed. And so uh, what will happen here is if, the, uh, if there is no montage, um, it's going to show the, uh, it'll, well, it'll set the ghost effects to active, but when there's no montage here, it'll immediately go through the not valid pin, and uh, it'll turn this to not active. So you won't see it at all, basically, on the first run through when you first start the, uh, to play the, the, the level or the game. Uh, it's only going to happen if the montage is playing, so if you're getting up. Uh, all right. Uh, let's give it a try and see where we're at so far with this. Play. Uh, okay, so first run through, we don't get anything. And uh, let's say we fall off of here. Okay. Uh, yeah, not bad. Uh, okay, a little bit dark though, so we're not seeing that effect very well. So what I'm going to do here is grab the uh, directional light, uh, the directional light 2, uh, and I'll increase the intensity maybe to uh, like 1.5. Um, and what I'm actually going to do as well is uh, I'll just duplicate this, control D, uh, and I'll change the angle. Uh, so let's uh, hit control L here, and we'll just point this one uh, from a different direction. So we're kind of getting multiple angles of light here. And uh, neither of these are uh, set to cast shadows, so it's okay. It's not going to look funny in terms of shadows. We're just going to get more sort of uh, uniform illumination here. Uh, and now they're both set to 1.5 as well, so we're just going to get a little bit more overall illumination as well. And uh, we'll give that a try here. All right. Uh, yeah, that's pretty good. That's basically the idea that I was after. So uh, I'm happy with that. And the next thing I'm going to do here is uh, create an elevator platform so that I can get back up to my uh, starting point here and, and sort of try the level again if you fall down. All right, I'll make a new actor here, a new blueprint actor called uh, elevator uh, underscore platform. And uh, what I'll do for this actually is uh, we'll just make a new cube style here, duplicate one of these, and uh, duplicate a material as well. We'll just call this uh, cube style 3 MAT. And uh, we'll set the glow color here to something new, uh, maybe this, uh, well, maybe an orange color. All right. Uh, and I'll set the floor color maybe something different as well. Maybe we'll make it a, a bit lighter. Okay, cube style 3, I'll open that up and apply that material. And uh, back to my elevator platform actor, I'll open this up. And I'll add a static mesh, uh, call it platform. And I'll set this to the cube style 3. All right, uh, and we'll leave the scale. We'll uh, just adjust that by setting a uh, variable here. I'll set a variable called platform scale. Make that a vector. And uh, we'll set the default value to 111. And in the construction script, we will grab a platform scale here and use it to set the scale of the platform mesh. Oops, 3D, uh, oh, uh, whoops, we can grab the uh, 3D relative scale here. There we go. Plug in this platform scale. All right. Uh, and the next thing that I want to do here is on begin play, I'm going to get the, uh, let's get the platform here, get world location. And I'll split the pin here. And I want to grab the uh, Z value and promote this to a variable. Call it the starting Z. OK. Uh, and then we'll also uh, set timer by event. And uh, for the time, we'll promote that to a variable also. We'll call it uh, elevator 
uh, time. That's fine. And I'll make that instance editable, expose on spawn. Same thing with uh, platform scale, instance editable, uh, oops, and uh, expose on spawn. All right, and for the uh, uh, timer by event here, we'll be looping. And I'll grab the event node here and make a new custom event. Uh, elevator uh, uh, swap, uh, or flip-flop, we'll call it here. And what I'll do is add uh, another variable here called um, uh, destination Z. And I'll set that to a float and make it instance editable, expose on spawn. Uh, or I don't need to expose on spawn, actually. It's just instance editable. And uh, same with both of these here, platform scale. I uh, don't need to expose that. Um, elevator time, same thing. OK, so destination Z, we're going to set the uh, Z that we want the uh, elevator to head to. Uh, and so what I'll do here is make one more variable called the target Z. Uh, and we'll uh, do a flip-flop from here. And each time through, we'll set the target Z. And uh, so the first time through, we will set it to the destination. And the second time through, we'll set it back to the starting Z. All right. Uh, and so then on the event tick, all we have to do here is grab the platform and say set world location. And uh, we'll split this pin here. And uh, we'll get the current location, get world location. Uh, split this pin as well. Uh, so we'll keep the X and uh, keep the Y. And uh, for the Z, we're going to lerp. Uh, so I'll just make a lerp node here uh, from the current to the target. And I'll plug that in here. Uh, and for the alpha, we'll promote that to a variable as well and call it elevator speed. And uh, for that one, I'm going to make that instance editable as well. So we can adjust, uh, adjust that from the editor. Uh, OK. So what I'll do here is just add a couple of these into the uh, level here. Uh, elevator platform. OK. Uh, I'll set the scale here to maybe, uh, let's say, 6 by 6 by uh, 0.5. All right. And uh, we'll just put this maybe somewhere like that. And I'll set the uh, destination Z uh, where we want it to be is, uh, what I'll do actually is just duplicate this with Alt. And we'll put one all the way at the bottom here, at the floor. Oops. Uh, straight up and down. OK, so that's basically the floor. And it's at uh, minus 1,200. We'll say put it at minus 1,300. And so this one here is at uh, plus 970. And uh, we'll say put it at plus 1,000. OK, so the destination for this one is going to be minus 1,300. Uh, and the elevator uh, time, we'll say make it every uh, four seconds. And the speed, something like uh, the, for the alpha there, we'll set it to like 0 0.01, maybe. I'll try that. Uh, same thing for this one here, 0 0.01. Uh, but this destination will be 1,000. And uh, the time, again, four seconds. And uh, let's try that out here. All right. Um, so that's pretty much what I was after there. We've got those elevators working uh, in an alternating mode. So whoops. Blocking our view there. Uh, OK, so that basically there's always one coming to the ground. You don't have to wait for an entire uh, round trip. Now we can get back up top and try the level again. And uh, so speaking of uh, trying the level again, let's make it so we can actually reach a goal and end up at another level here. Um, so what I'll do is uh, first, uh, we'll save this level. And uh, I'm going to rename this. Uh, we'll say actually save current level as, uh, I'm just going to call this level 1. And uh, so I'll delete this untitled now. And I'll take level 1 here, just Control-D to duplicate. And now I have level 2. And I'll open that up. And uh, of course, it's exactly the same. So what I'll do here is maybe just uh, we'll grab these 
and uh, I'm going to move them over here so we'll recognize that we're on uh, a different level here. And uh, what I'll do is um, we want to make, let's say, a box collider over on this platform. Uh, that'll let us know that we've reached the goal. Uh, so I'll make uh, a new actor here. Uh, and I'll call this the goal actor. All right, and I'll just add a uh, box collision. And uh, let's just make this uh, visible in the game. Instead of hidden in game, I'll check that to false. So uh, we can see this, and I'll just drag it to uh, goal actor. Let's drag it to over here, for example. Uh, and I'll maybe make this a bit bigger, this uh, box here. I'll scale it up. Let's say uh, maybe 2 by 2 by 2. Save that. Uh, all right, and what I'll do is add a variable here, and we'll call it um, level, uh, we'll call this next level. Set this to a name. All right. Uh, instance editable as well. And uh, on the event graph, we'll do on begin overlap here. We'll just say open level and plug in the next level name here. All right, so now what I can do here is uh, we'll just set this uh, next level to uh, slash uh, game slash level one, because we're already in level two here. We'll just circle back to level one. Uh, and I'll go back to level one here, save everything. And I'll put a goal actor over here as well. And then uh, for this one here, we'll say the next level will be slash game slash level two. All right. And uh, one more thing I want to do here is just create uh, a widget that's going to tell us um, which level we're on here. Uh, so I'll just make a new user interface widget blueprint. I'll call it uh, level display widget. Uh, and I'll just add a canvas panel and then a, a text. Just drag that in here. And I'll just put it and make it say level one for now. To size it up, I'll set the font to maybe uh, 200. And uh, we'll just drag that out like that. Maybe put it more centered. All right. And uh, what we'll do here is set this to a variable and call it the level uh, name. And I'll close that. Uh, and I'll open up that goal actor. And so uh, every level will have the goal actor in it. And so on begin play, we'll just uh, show that widget, create widget, uh, level display widget, grab the return value here, and we'll set the level name. Uh, and we'll set that to, uh, we'll just get, um, uh, oops, I don't want to set level name. Of course, we need to get level name and then use a set text setter function. There we go. And uh, we'll get the current level, uh, let's see, get level uh, name, get current level name. Uh, simple enough. We'll just plug this in first here. Uh, okay, and uh, we'll plug this string in here, it'll convert to a text. And uh, then next we want to grab this widget return value and say add to viewport. Uh, and then we'll just set a timer by event, uh, wait, let's say two seconds, and uh, then we'll set, we'll remove that um, widget. So I'll just put a custom event here, remove widget, and uh, we'll grab this return value here and say remove from parent. All right, uh, so let's give that a try here. All right, and uh, yeah, we overlap our trigger box, boom, level two, and here we are. All right, and of course, uh, you know, you could make uh, as many levels as you want. Okay, so I'm going to wrap it up here for now, I think, and uh, maybe I'll add some more to this game in uh, another video. Uh, we'll see. Uh, but thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed watching, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.